So you want to make some astral diamonds, eh? This is how I make some extra AD beyond the daily dungeon queues. I'm not saying it's the best system. If you have any other methods or areas you like to farm that you can find items and turn them into auction house sellables, please share it with the rest of the class. I'm still learning a lot myself and I'm sure others would much appreciate any other good tips. If you take away nothing else from my class, from this experience, let it be this. If you're not a genius, don't bother. Happy New Year, everybody. Sorry I've been away for a while, but I've set some goals for 2022. Cheers. I need to do some setting up in order to get to the end result of you being able to make a bit more AD on the market. Someone brand new may be watching and needs to learn this stuff. I'll explain as I go through my normal routine. So let's log in here. I've got two free accounts. So this is me logging into my first one. You can see I'm right in front of the workshop here. If I open up the map, you can see I'm down here pretty much all the way on the farthest south area. This little uh, key here, you can scroll down and click workshop, and it'll highlight that. You can also left click on PC and set a waypoint. For reference, here's the big tree right in the center of the map in Protector's Enclave. Sergeant Knox is up here. So it's just down this corridor here. You can see the tree over there for reference. So I just come into the workshop. You'll have to do some early requests as a new player to come in and, and uh, unlock this. And you'll have to do some leveling up in order to get certain gear. But this is the first thing I do. I clear this chest. I come straight over here and just press collect all. Sometimes you can get some instant ones. I'll go over some of the special abilities of the artisans. Um, in just a second. Then I come over here and check for any additional applications. These are uh, artisans who are applying. I look at their stuff so very quickly. Proficiency and focus do matter but that's not something I look at heavily. The biggest things is the commission multiplier and the speed multiplier and then the special skill that that artisan is assigned. They only get one and it can go up to 25 percent as far as I know. I haven't seen anything higher than that myself, but I haven't unlocked Workshop 4, uh, which I'll show you in a, in a minute. But the commission multiplier, so anything this person would be assigned to would cost 50% more because there's a plus sign there. So it costs 50% more for him to complete tasks, which is not a good thing. And he's 50% slower because the speed multiplier has a minus there. And he has the special, kill, uh, special skill, Recycle. He has a 10% chance of refunding materials in the case of a failure. So this only this only pings if you fail, and then there's a 1 in 10 shot that you'll get those materials back when you're trying to make something. This is your board here in the workshop. This is where you dispatch your, your gatherers uh, or your adventurers to go grab stuff. I'm currently grabbing some of that stuff. And then over here, this big long table here, this is where you can make stuff. This is my normal routine. On PC, it's going to be a little bit different than on console. So for PC, you can follow along exactly how I do if you wish. So you can make any of the low level stuff as long as it gets you. So you can see leather boots here or visors. Leather visors would be better actually because it only costs two leather. So if you were doing leather working as your first starting craft, you would want to make leather visors because you get 34 silver per one. I usually stick to making copper rings in jewel crafting because it's easy and I've got a good artisan that does it. If I hover over her, you can see she's 75% cheaper than most than the regular cost. So if I clear this out, I'm on copper ring right now. You can see the commission cost is 34 copper. So it's really, really cheap. But when I put her in place, you can see it goes from 34 to 9 because she's 75% cheaper. She's also 125% faster at making things and completing completing things you put her on than, than the normal speed. And she's got a 1 in 5 shot, which is Miracle Worker. That's her special skill. She's got a 20% chance to instantly complete a task or negate the morale cost if it's rushed. So you can see here, I haven't started this today. If I hover on the bottom right of this professions tab, and again, all I'm doing is going into this table on the bottom right, 
I have 400 morale cost. Every day that resets on Gamer Reset, I drag this right below the Zen Market, the word Professions. I drag this box here on PC, and then I make sure I'm in my inventory bag. Very quick, there's three main forms of currency. You've got gold, astral diamonds, and Zen. Uh, for brand new players, 100 copper equals one silver, 100 silver equals one gold. On the, on the right side, you have astral diamonds, and you can also click the riches tab here, which is the second one down from your inventory bags. And you can see the currencies, and you can see all of the different currencies that adventurers and campaigns give you. I'm saying this for a reason, because I'm about to show you how to make gold. So I'll just go ahead and stick on that for now. So I'll go here. I'm on copper rings. So it's just from levels one to four. It's the first thing. So look, copper ingots. If I were to sell that, you can see sort of to the left of my mouse, it says two copper. It costs, it'll cost her. And remember, she's, she's a lot cheaper. So if I clear this out, it would cost 11 copper to make someone without a bonus, but you only get two copper for selling it. So you need to watch that stuff. Same thing here, if I hover over this, it cost me six with her, but I only get three copper. So you don't wanna be making copper ingots and sandstone whetstones and then selling them to to an AI you know, person. But copper rings, you can tell you can tell the difference because it's got the blue color on it. So this gives you, you know, 34 silver, this gives you 34 silver. Basically for every three copper rings I sell, I'm gonna get one gold. Same thing with the, le with the leather uh, visor. You can see that there. You don't want to be making le leather. So whatever whatever uh, profession you start in, it really doesn't matter. But like I said, I just use jewel crafting. And I just have my inventory bag open so I can kind of see in the background. And the reason I, pu I put this uh, over the Zen Market button here on PC is so I can just sit here and click my left mouse button and spam these copper rings as fast as I can. And as I'm doing this, you can see my morale is going down. You can also see right here, I'm clicking craft and it has five morale. If I click the right one, it's going to take her four and a half minutes because she's also 125% faster. So it depends on what artisan you have slotted in there. And then the higher level items are going to take a lot longer to make them manually. And they're going to cost a lot more morale. So let me go ahead and click something level 13 to 16. Let's say I wanted to make some elect. Uh, Electrum ingots. I've got some plus one high quality stuff that I farmed. So I go ahead and click the plus button so I can make that if I wanted to. It'll cost me an hour and six minutes or 30 morale if I wanted to make that instantly. So you can use some morale if you want to make some, some higher end stuff. Uh, one quick note, in all of these, uh, just about all of these professions, there's some really great things that you can make some money with. You need to get into master uh, master craft and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that into this video. I would suggest you find somebody who's been able to master that themselves. I haven't gotten into that myself, but uh, greater awareness jewel. So body armor kits and things like that are really uh, useful. I don't have them on this tune, but these things you can see, they actually cost astral diamonds to make. So that's the commission cost to make these. They cost a lot, they cost expensive high-end materials to make, but you can get a, a really nice profit off of selling those types of items, especially with someone like this who's 75% cheaper, so it's going to cost less. And she's got Miracle Worker, but some people have special skills where you might have a 1 in 4 or a 1 in 5 shot of them negating the commission cost altogether. So make sure you're checking those special skills. I would suggest don't just stack up on Miracle Worker or Recycle or anything like that. You want to try and have a variety of different uh, workers depending on what it is you're after. I'll show you that here. If I hover over, I've got three uh, Jewel Crafters. So this one, he's a one in four chance Miracle Worker. Now the reason I'm not using him is I'm making such a cheap item. He's 25% more expensive to make stuff normally. Um, sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. It doesn't really matter. I'm just making extra gold at this point. I'm not making these copper rings for anything other than to sell. 
and I make anywhere from 25 to 35 per tune. I'm a free-to-play player completely, so between the two, I average about 60 gold per day making it, uh, making these copper rings. And then if I hover over this one, which is my third jewel crafter, you can see he's got Passion Project. That's the other special skill that I was just mentioning. He's got a 1 in 5 chance to negate the commission costs at the start of the recipe. So he would be somebody I would absolutely use if I wanted to make some like major awareness jewels, which my tank is wearing, to, to, to buff his, uh, his awareness. But let me finish making these and... I'll move on. Do, 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 do. All right. So if I open the table again, you can see I'm at zero morale now. Every ring cost me five morale. And with her special skill, I had a one in five shot of it being free and not costing morale. So I ended up with this many rings. So when you're a new player, you're not going to have quite as many bags. I'm not maxed out here. I still have an extra one there. I can, I can and load and I'll show that on my second tune when I go to him like I said it's the same process generally uh, just logging in for for the first time of the day but I'm gonna sell all these rings I'll show you where I head now I hope you're bearing with me this is just to this is just to show you exactly my routine I'm not saying this is meta there's plenty of ways of doing things there's plenty of items that people choose to make other than stupid copper rings but you can see I'm just selling these. And for every three, roughly, I'm getting a gold. So you can see I'm at 16 right now. So 1, 2, 17, 1, 2, 18, 1, 2, 19, and so on. So you won't have as many bags as a new player, like I was saying. But you just have to go do a couple of trips back and forth, back and forth. And eventually, you'll still, you'll still end up with 25, 30 gold, something like that. You can see here I had, I think, 17. Now I'm at 48 gold. I'm going to blow the lid on everything I sell, how I list stuff. Um, my items change a lot. What I sell and what I don't sell changes a lot. So on PC, I open up my inventory bag and I go down here to the fourth tab. This is my in, this is my little uh, material satchel or my professions, like all, all my resources and stuff that I get from the workshop that my artisans make. You can see I was making horn glue, so I've got some of that. You can see I've got various different items on my, on my little spare tune here. So let's just search soot. And you can see I'm not, I'm not at the auction house. The auction house is around this corner, but you can simply open it up here on this top, this top menu bar here. So I open it up. Let's search. Let's get this all set up. So it looks like I still have three active listings on soot. I am the lowest listing. Um, and so you can see it doesn't sell very often. I had two listings expire. Uh, and you can see these have been up for a little over a day or so. Uh, I think they they list for five days. So they, they've been up for just over a day, these three listings. I listed them at the same time. So let's see. I'm only selling them for 3,866. As a brand new player, you might think, ah, I made three, 4,000 AD. That's really not a lot when you when you get into it. But as a new player, like I said, you're, you're not going to be making hundreds of thousands of astral diamonds. It's just not, you, you got to start somewhere, right? So I'm just going here. And by the way, this is the Seven Suns uh, Coaster Market. The workshop is right here. Here is the market I'm at. I'm at this... Uh, material supplier you meet him when you first unlock the workshop you get that pretty early on so i'm looking at the materials he has for sale like i said i'm blowing the lid on this for anyone who doesn't know this this type of method you can see it's only nine copper per soot so if i click that i'm just tapping a bunch of nines so i can get a stack of 999 and it costs me just under one gold We'll call it one gold. Uh, I round up and, and slightly down just to make it easier on the math in my head. And I do like a factor of 10. So if I was selling soot and it and it dropped under like a thousand astral diamonds, it's not worth it for me. Now, frankly, if I'm selling something for a thousand astral diamonds, I won't even go through the, <laughs> through the hassle of doing this. But, you know, if I'm making four or 5,000 astral diamonds, and it only cost me 89 silver to make that. That's why if I 
scroll down here, you can see I have a few stacks and I've got some plus one items. The only way you get plus plus one, so you can see here, I, this is just soot and then this is soot plus one. And on the top left corner of each of the boxes, you can see that's how you can indicate whether or not this is random mer, just, you know, basic mer branch or the mer branch plus one. Um, that's what my gatherers got. You can only get the plus one by, well, you can buy it on the auction house actually, um, as well. So I can, I could sell this plus one if I wanted to, but I'd rather just keep it in case I need it, uh, because the price difference is not that great. And again, like I said, I'll show you real quick. So you can just type it out, or if you have your satchel open, you can drag and drop on PC the names of anything you want to look for. So let's say I want to look for the price of beast horns right now. So a stack of 999 plus one, which is what I got because my harvesters got it. I didn't, uh, you can't get, you can't get the high end items from the materials supplier. So it's selling for just under 40,000. So let's say I want to list this stack of beast horns because I've got another 287 and my, uh, my gatherers are getting some of that anyway. I want to make sure I'm competing to try and sell because you can see there's a lot of competition here, right? So I could list this and in 10 minutes, somebody could just out, you know, could update their listing and underbid me. Now, a quick tip for listing is if you're a free to play player like I am, I don't have VIP. So I'll show you 39,960. We'll just keep that in mind. 39,960. I don't bother with the, uh, with the starting bids. So 39,960 was the lowest bid. So I just did 39,959, right? My posting fee is 799 Astral Diamonds. You'll see it come out of my little stack here on the bottom left. You can just see I lost 799 Astral Diamonds, but I have a new listing in my consignments. So now I have four listings on my extra character. So if this sells, I'll make just under 40,000 Astral Diamonds minus a 10% trade house cut. The posting fee is negated for VIP players. So they can, they can, if I was to click on this, I'll actually go ahead and do it with one of these soot items because it's less expensive. If I come down here, I can remove that lot. It says, are you sure you want to remove it? You can see I have three right now. Boom. Now I have two. And you can see new right here. So it just dropped into my inventory. I just got that stack of soot back. So if I wanted to relist that, let me just match my price here. 3867. I actually do that to make sure that my newest listing is going to be below. So I've got three again, you can see. I'll type in soot. Now you can see 3867 is my third listing on soot. It doesn't sell very fast, like I said, but I went ahead and added one more astral diamond on that to make sure I didn't, uh, I don't sell this one while these ones you know, the timer on those is going to expire faster. And again, if someone comes in and, and competes with my price, if this person with plus one, you can see there's, there's three of them here. Um, if, if those people come in and edit their listings or, the, or somebody new comes in, they can just drive the price down. Again, if it gets too low, you can kind of decide whether or not it's going to be worth it for you. But I just wanted to show you exactly how I did that. And so, you can look at any of the items he has for sale. Like we'll look at Siltstone, right? You can get a stack of 999. It costs 18, almost 19 gold. We'll call it 19 gold. 19 gold for a stack of Siltstone. If I open the auction house and I look for Siltstone, then uh, you can see there's stacks of 100. I'm just going down to the to the cheapest stack of 999. This person's selling a basic stack for 9,000 Astral Diamonds. That's, in, in my opinion, that's a really bad investment because they're spending 18 gold. Remember, I use the factor of 10. So they're spending uh, basically 9,000. So they're, they're spending 9,000. They're spending twice the Astral Diamonds that I would spend to, in order to justify selling a basic stack of that. And you can see they're trying to compete with somebody who has the plus one stack and it's only a couple thousand more astral diamonds to get the plus one. 
some people are going to come in here and they're just going to buy the plus one because it's only a few extra thousand astral diamonds, right? Because siltstone is actually very cheap and very quick to gather using your gatherers. So you want to check some items. Sometimes they're not worth listing. Now, siltstone could fluctuate and it could, you know, the price could go up. There could be less competition and it might be worth it. Let's look at stilled water. So stilled water, this is gray because my second character, Cliff, and you can see I'm on mirror right now, my other tune. So my second character, Cliff, he has a listing, but he's been undercut by this Irene character and they're selling it for 5,000. At that point, I will not chase that price down anymore. And the reason for that is again, the factor of 10, it's just not worth it for me. I am not going under my price. That was pretty much like my bare bones price anyways for stilled water. So I won't, I won't really bother looking at water for a while. You can see that listing expires in 11 and a half hours anyway. I'll go ahead and let that expire uh, just in case this one sold and someone bought two stacks of water. Maybe they end up buying mine anyway in the next 12 hours. But I'm going to go ahead and let that one sit. I've got some extra aberrant hide here. I've been stacking that up. So let me see real quick. A stack of aberrant hide sold, sells for about 25000 my gatherers got it, so it cost. It did cost commission cost, so I did invest some gold in this. Um, I don't know exactly how much, but because I have so much on hand, I'll go ahead and try and undercut this and see if I get lucky and sell it. You can see this guy's had his listing for like four days, and they're just not selling. This guy's had stacks of 99 plus one. So, oh, so these are, yeah, okay, mine are plus one too, but aberrant hide just doesn't sell very well. But let me see if I get lucky. So 25,520. Let's try 24,989. Why not? I'll go just under 25,000. Now I'm not really worried about this guy with 12. I mean, if someone only needs 12, they can buy that. I'm not going to try and like, you know, necessarily compete with that. Sometimes people do that as a bait. So I'll take out my phone. I'm holding my phone right now, and this is exactly how I do the math. So you, you, let's say I wanted to go under, I want to be the cheapest, even, even cheaper than this guy with only 12 to sell. So I would take his total price of Astral Diamonds, 300, and divide it by how many he has. He has 12. So 300 divided by 12 is 25. Now I want to sell a stack of 999. So I'm going to times that 25, so 300 divided by 12 equals 25 times 999, right? Equals 24,975. I'm actually gonna lose some Astral Diamonds just to show you. So I'm at 24,989. I'm going to return this and just immediately relist it. 24,975 was his listing. I'm going to do 974. Being that it was close enough, I'm going to go ahead and show this just for demonstration purposes. And boom, now I just undercut even the guy with 12. So I'm the lowest listing on here. I wouldn't suggest doing that because if I want to list up something that is, uh, that's around 25,000 Astral Diamonds, you don't have to actually list stuff. You can just see. It cost me about 500 Astral Diamonds just to list that, remove it, and then relist it again. So I spent a thousand astral diamonds to list that twice in a row for you real quick. So you're telling me there's a chance. And then with this material supplier, you can go down and see if it's worth selling any of this stuff. So let's say I wanted to check zinc ore again. You just take the stack 999. I'm not actually buying zinc ore right now, right? But you can do this just to see, okay, it costs about four and a half gold to buy a, a stack of zinc ore. So then I exit out of it, go into here, type in zinc ore, and I can see a stack of 999 is selling for about 3,000 astral diamonds. So do I think buying a stack of this at four and a half is worth it? No, not in my personal opinion. And so, you know, you can go through here, you can check rock salt, tin ore, sandstone, whetstones, a stack of 999 of those is 11 and a half gold. But siltstone, sandstone, whetstones do sell okay. 
uh, copper ingots sell fast, but there is a lot of competition in those, and the price can can drop uh, quite considerably at times. Uh, I have sold sold like copper ingots for over twenty thousand per stack, so that's a that's that's definitely worth it at that price. But again, I'm making a video sharing a couple of things that I search for and shop for with gold. That's why I showed you how to make gold daily. But you can scroll down. You can see he's got a ton of different things. So like wolf leather, I've sold stacks of wolf, uh, wolf leather before. Now not 999, but I'll I'll buy like 29 for 23 gold, right? Now if I can sell that for more than, if I can sell that for about 23,000 astral diamonds or more, if I can get like 25, 30,000 AD for it, I'll go for it, right? Not not saying wolf leather sells super fast. I've had listings sit for three, four days and they sell. Uh, but it, uh, again, it depends on the competition. Wolf hide, deer leather, animal bone. There's just all sorts of stuff you can look through here. You can see the stilled water here. You can buy full stacks for five and a half gold. That's why I told you I'm not going to go below 5,000 because that just breaks my factor of 10. It costs five and a half gold for a stack. And I was at, what, 5,600? So I was right at, my, right at my cutoff point. And it's no longer worth it for me to invest in trying to sell that at this time. Linseed oil. You can just go through here, antler glues, different types of glues can be good. That's why I was making horn glue with my artisans. I make fish glue with my character Cliff because I don't have as many. This was this character I'm on right now, uh, right now Mirror. I've got more things maxed out at level 20 than he does. You can see I've got four things and I'm working on tailoring right now. But I'll go ahead and hop on Cliff and show you the same process. I'm right at the workshop. Come on in, clear out my chest, and then I'll check the uh, my little desk to see if there's any applications, and I'll clear them out if they're not good, and just do the same process with my little copper rings. And I happen to have the same artisan. <laughs> but let's go ahead and sell these copper rings, and then I'll check my mail and go through the same process and show you what I do there to check the auction house for some possible astral diamonds. Let's go to this one over here is the closest mailbox and see if I have any sales. So you can see I got a handful of sales here. This is just from yesterday and one expi or two expired. So two things didn't sell. You can see them right there before you open them. So I sold some sandstone whetstone and after the auction house takes its, its fee, I made about 15,000 per stack. That's three sandstone whetstones. So my fish glue did not sell. I had some stilled water that didn't sell. Some cotton yarn sold, some flax sold, more sandstone whetstone, and some copper ingots. And you can see I was at 296 and I'm at 378 now. So I made what, like 80,000 astral diamonds from, uh, from selling that. And this isn't, this isn't from doing dungeons. I haven't done any dungeons today. So I can still run my dungeon queues and get my 100,000 per day. You can see here, I don't have any rad saved up, which is raw astral diamonds, uh, rough astral diamonds. I don't have any saved up. So I can run those dungeons, get the 100,000 astral diamonds, because you can, you can only refine up to 100,000 a day. But I just made 80,000 from having listings up yesterday as well. And so some days are better than others. I've made three, 400,000 astral diamonds in a single day. That's a really good day. And that's a rare day. That's not something that, that typically happens at my level for what I'm selling. Uh, for some people who are selling those in game things like greater jewels and stuff, I wanted to show you that real quick. I know this video is long. I'm, I hope you're bearing with me and I hope you're getting some, some valuable information out of this. I'm being as candid and open as I possibly can be. Now, again, I want to note, you don't want to just copy like, oh, I'll sell copper ingots because Cliff is selling copper ingots or Lincoln, whatever. Um, because I'm making a video sharing this stuff, there's probably going to be a, you know, a, a, a sizable, fresh, sizable competition in some of those categories, right? So make sure you're looking at that, you know, at that material supplier, make sure you're checking some things that might not seem to be getting as much attention. And when they sell, 
they might not sell as fast, but you're, you have less competition. So you relist less often. You're not competing to be the lowest listing. You're not getting buried by new lister, uh, you know, listings and you're selling. Like when I first started, I started selling health potions. So I'll just drag this in there. I'll change it to 10 because I was selling max 10. So I'll, so this is pretty much exactly what I was selling them for, about 20,000 per stack of 99. And I would buy them from the same place you buy health potions for, like, you know, any of those people that sell po health potions and, and like these little, you know, deflect rank and whatever. I would buy with gold stacks of 99 of those health po potions and make 20K. Now I will say health potions sell very fast but they're expensive to purchase. But if you do need to try and get, you know, one or 200,000 astral diamonds very quick within a few hours, if you're the lowest listing, these can sell somewhat quick. Now, again, um, I think that has slightly changed being that health stones are more prominent. Like you can see here, I have four health stones. I've got this one with 200, 100, and then two fifties. And I've got this other one that I just started I've only used four out of the 50 in my dungeons. So I'm kind of stacked up on health stones right now. I used to use health potions more often, but because of the introduction of health stones being more frequent and when you, when you get rewards in dungeons, you seem to get them more often now. So health potions may not sell as fast now, but that is the range at which I sold them at was about 20,000 a stack. 20 to 25,000 is the range you want to look for for those. Um, but they're, they're a lot more expensive than 25 gold for a stack. I think it's like 69 or gold or something like that, but that's how I started to learn what I'm doing. You know, what I do now to make 50, 60,000 Astro diamonds a day, give or take. So I'm back where I started and let me just check. You can see, I don't have any listings for copper ingots. So I'm just going to go here and you can see I'm already like. I already know I'm going to list some copper ingots, right? So I just took 50,000 astral diamonds, divide it by 15, and it's it's retarded, right? I don't need to do this math, honestly, but I just want to do it to see. So times 999. So <laughs> to beat this listing right now, I'd have to be 3.33 million. I'd have to be some somewhat under that, right? So a really, really, really unrealistic but awesome range is like you know 24 to 26,000 so I'm just pressing numbers 24165 right bam 24165 bam 24165 bam you may have been asking yourself why I have so many certain things from that material supplier it's because sometimes those are things I target 24165 bam and now that I've refreshed the search, you can see I'm the four lowest listings. For 24,000 Astral Diamonds, somebody can buy a stack of copper ingots. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm done with that one. Let's check cotton yarn. Let me check my active listings real quick. Okay. All right. So I'm still, there's only a stack of five and a stack of 16 ahead of my 999 with a stack of 11. Not a ton of competition here. They don't sell very quick. But it's something to just make another, you know, 8,000 Astral Diamonds. So I'll do, I got 8,766. So 8,766, 8,767. I'll do one more Astral Diamond to make sure that's the bottom listing. So it's a fresh five days that I got to wait. This one, you know, in three and a half days it expires. These two do. So I want to make sure those get sold bef before this one. If I do the same price, it's sort of a, a roll of the dice on which one's going to be the top one. So if I made this 8766 and I matched the exact price of my prior listings, it may have been on top. And which means the, the newest listing would sell first. If that makes, I think that makes sense. Sometimes I can ramble. Let's check our flax. I'm still the lowest listing there. 7353. Seven three five three, and you can see I'm I'm just I'm just erasing the starting bid. I don't bother with that. So I've got four listings on that one. That's good. Like cotton yarn doesn't sell very frequently, so for some reason I just do like two or three listings on that one. 
because uh, sometimes they expire and I get them back. Let's see. There's only two listings on sandstone whetstones. They're 11 and a half gold per stack. Now remember that. Again, um, you know, it, it, hey, if they're selling for like seven, eight thousand a stack because there's a lot of competition, but you're still selling them quick enough and you're happy with making seven, eight thousand per eleven and a half gold. That means, you know, if you're making, if you have two free characters and you get 60 gold a day and you sell five or six stacks per day, you're still making Astro Diamonds. It's still free gold. That's not counting the money that you get from dungeons and killing trolls and picking up, you know, little coins and copper and silver here and there. But I'm going to go ahead and do some listings. So 16, 7, 8, 3. So I'll do, let's just do... 16649, right? Why not? 16649. 16649. 16649. 16649. And you can see it cost me 333 to post it, right? So if if somebody comes in 10 minutes later, or two days or you know four days whatever if someone comes in in between my listing and outbids me you can see this person just bid four out he bid two hours two hours ago this person uh you know put this up here and outbid this person and i just outbid them two hours later somebody could come in two hours later and outbid me which means i could let these sit here and maybe their listing sells maybe it's only one or two ahead of mine and I, I don't bother maybe they bury me like I did this guy right so my stack of four has to sell before somebody will likely buy down here uh, I think I think I said no to this already yeah I'm just gonna let that sit I'm not gonna I'm not going under 5k let's check 10 or uh, these don't sell super frequently as well you see this thing's been sitting on on here for over three and a half days and it hasn't sold but I do have three listings up there if somebody wants it. This guy's listing ends in 17 and a half hours. Um, and let's check. I had one expensive one on there I saw. All right, so I'm still the cheapest listing for Iron Sand, but that's been sitting there for over a day and it hasn't sold. But Iron Sand, Iron Sand, you can see a stack of 999. It's the plus one version. My gatherers earned it. I didn't buy this from the material supplier. Uh, you do have to level up, level up your workshop and level up your gatherers to start getting higher end stuff. But once that sells, if that was to sell right now, I'd make you know 50 around 55,000 astro diamonds once the uh, once the auction house took its cut, right? You can see in my chest, I got two people gathering iron sand right now. One getting fish glue, and all three of my artisans on the table over here are making fish glue. You can see that here, current orders on the bottom left. These are all my alchemists. So these are my alchemists all working. And I, I just got them all making fish glue. That's rank levels 9 to 12 right there. I do want to show brand new players a little trick right here. This dispatch board, this is where you, uh, where you send out your gatherers, right? Now, levels 1 through 4, you can do this day 1. I want to make this clear. You can do this on day one. If you have like, if you play for four or five hours on day one, you can start gathering uh, sword close tea leaves on day one. So you want to start gathering like well water, anything that's level one, right? Well water and down. So tin ore, right? I, I just showed you that. It's really easy to gather. Soot. You can gather some of that. Maple log, copper ore. So you can make some copper ingots of your own instead of buying them. You can do that. Then go ahead and level up, get yourself some nettle, animal sinew, beast fangs, zinc ore, whatever you need to get to level up. And once you get once you get high enough level to where your gather your little adventurers or gatherers can get Sword Coast tea leaves, you can start looking for Sword Coast tea leaves. The reason I say that as a little tip is Sword Coast tea. Let's see if that pops it up. There we go. 17,000 Astral Diamonds currently for the plus one version. You get these really fast. The lower level stuff, they get faster. The higher level stuff takes a long time to get. Some stuff takes two, three hours to get, you know, one stack of it. Whereas the Sword Coast tea leaves, 
because it's only level four, your gather is it might only take 10, 15, 20 minutes for them to get it, depending on what skills they have as, as well, of course. But um, these these can sell as high as 20,000 plus per stack. And for a new player coming into the game, that's a great option to look at. That is my super duper secret trick on how I make Astral Diamonds that way. Now, of course, you can go through dungeons and sometimes you can get super duper lucky and get, you know, uh, a legendary Mao, an epic Mao. You can get stuff to drop and then you can check the price on it. Like I had a polar bear cub drop once. And the cool thing about selling on the auction house is that polar bear cub, if you sell it for 200,000, that's that's not raw. That is that is workable. So if I had you know, let's just go back to this mount collar that I've got sitting in my inventory. Let's say I sold it for 600,000. I would have 975,000 just like that. So I would have almost a million astral diamonds just by selling this mount collar that's unbound to me. And again, you won't be able to do all these dungeons when you're brand new. You'll only get access to the random dungeon queue down here, which will give you 6,000. And if you match the roll bonus at the time, uh, for some reason, like tanks are really needed today. Uh, tank, tank. Yeah. Tanks are really needed right now, but sometimes it's healer and every now and then, uh, it is DPS. I have seen it be DPS sometimes. So don't get, dis don't get discouraged. We'll just run this a few times a day to go ahead and stack up at a low level and start doing those tricks. Start selling those low level items like sword coast tea leaves, zinc ore, tin ore, things like that. Just target low level stuff. And as you level up, you'll eventually start to get your, your gatherers will be able to gather stuff like fish bones, like honey, all that different stuff. Sorry to rant a lot on it, but hopefully this, this video is helpful and, uh, yeah. See you guys later. Now we know how to take them out, General. Spread the word. I could have been at a barbecue!